Welcome to the Osmo Early Bird Podcast. It's your old pal Emac coming to you with one Adam Ship, my money share, as we get ready for Saturday NBA action, November 23rd on the Early Bird Podcast, brought to you by the one and only Yahoo Daily Fantasy Sports, home of the YSRPs, whereas Dave Loffy Lochran says, you too can be a baller. Adam, how are you doing? Doing good. Uh, kind of stressful Friday night with the the Kings not ruling out Bogdanovich until five minutes after lock, but, uh, you know, it, it's pretty fun. Yeah, shout out to the sites that have late swap. Thank you, Fantasy Cruncher. I did. A, I had uh, 25 minutes to adjust to that news, so I took care of that. I, I now have – I didn't see what, uh, what uh, Yogi Ferrell ended up being, but he was the guy. I went to him and healed, so I, I went from basically nil to uh, 20% of each of them in my lineups. I figured that was reasonable. Yeah, I did about the same. But uh, not on Yahoo, but I only did one lineup there, but it's doing well. It's a, a Wizards game stack. I did that last week against Minnesota, and that turned out quite nicely. So we'll have to see how that Friday fun goes. You can play over there in their uh, – they do a season-long contest. It's basically a free roll. They run it every Friday. I think they drop your, like, five or six lowest scores, but you can get into that weekly prizes as well as uh, for the whole season. Uh, they do that for NFL and MLB as well. So definitely jump in on there. And of course, if you have not yet signed up for Yahoo, go to any of the Cash Building Blocks articles or the NBA primetime, pardon me, NFL primetime game articles on Osmo. Those are free articles. Bottom section has the instructions link and uh, promo code and how you can get $30 in YSRPs with your initial DFS deposit bonus. Adam, we got a few teams on a back to back here, 18 teams in action. We have 10 of them on back-to-backs. I did a cursory look. I may have missed one, but Chicago, Charlotte, Miami, Philadelphia, San Antonio, Atlanta, Cleveland, the Lakers, Detroit, and the Jazz are the teams that are on a back-to-back. We'll go by position here. We'll utilize um, the uh, DraftKings uh, salaries and kind of loosely their positions to keep us organized. And then, of course, we will circle back there with some FanDuel and Yahoo pricing as well. Adam, it's point guards. The world is your oyster. Yeah, so I mean, at the top, uh, you have you know Trey Young on a back-to-back tough matchup against Toronto. Um, Damian Lillard probable against Cleveland. I think is a pretty appealing spot, assuming he's good to go. Only eighty nine hundred on DraftKings. Um, Cleveland's been okay defensively, not as bad as as expected, but you know, still not really a scary matchup there. Not you know, none of the you know, no, no Luca on the slate, I guess is what I should say, but no Luca, no Harden. Um, so guard, not quite as deep as, as it normally is. And it'll make it, you know, a little bit easier to get to these upper, upper like bid tier guys. Am I going crazy? Oh, interesting. Okay. That's kind of weird. Did, am I, what filters do I have on? Oh, there we go. Is, did uh, DraftKings post their games yet? Mm-hmm. I don't know. For Saturday. Interesting. I am not seeing them. I bet that's why my filter didn't work. Of course, I'm not seeing that. Let me get over to one more screen here. Riveting, I know. Aha, that could be a problem. All right. Well, we will look at that uh, shortly. Let me get over here. We'll uh, we'll open up the old Yahoo so we can talk about that at the meantime, and I'll see what I did to muck things up. I was trying... There we go. Seven o'clock game, point guard. Um, let's see. Ooh, Adam, here's a fun one. LeBron is now point guard eligible on Yahoo. That caught me off guard. Yeah, it's I think, you know, the right decision. I think it makes it's it makes sense in, in 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 our pausing for a moment, what do you think about positionless positionless basketball? Should we even try anymore at this point? <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to have something. Although well, but what if you went guards, back. forwards, and whatever? I mean, does it? Are we at the point where things shift enough that we could just go the fantasy draft route? Or I mean, you, def- you definitely could. It's all about, I guess, you know, like what people want out of the product. But yeah, you can, you can definitely, you know, argue that basically every you can make an argument for any player just being in, you know, one of those groups instead of, you know, point guard, shooting guard, or, or whatever. Except Bradley Beal. Yeah. Yeah. Except Beal. The deal. All right. Well, let me. Oh, here we go. That's where I've got the. All right. Now I've got. I've got my. Sorry. I'm going back to my Excel sheet here. Uh, all right. So, 
this has been a lot of fun let me filter on point guard and we will continue said discussion here so as we continue on down the list here uh we do have fred van vliet adam he has been actually solid gets a great matchup against atlanta 7300 on dk 77 he's shooting guard on fanduel and then shooting guard as well on yahoo he's 33 i think those are reasonable price points across the board in this particular matchup john ja morant rather interesting but he's going against the lakers that one's going to be a little bit difficult do we think uh rondo's going to play on a back-to-back -back, uh is another question as we come down the pricing list we know Dejounte murray most likely will not he got the start on friday night so he's not playing on back-to-back -back, so he's going to be out Derek White's still out, so maybe we have some Patty Mills, Brent Forbes love. Uh, as we continue down the price sheet here, Adam, what tickles your fancy? Uh, I really like Van Vliet here. I don't really know why his salary hasn't moved, but it hasn't. And he's playing like 38, 40 minutes in competitive games. Now he gets to face an Atlanta team that isn't good defensively, plays at a, a reasonably fast pace. So I, I really like that. I like Bledsoe against Detroit. Um, increased usage for him without Chris Middleton and you know a, a favorable matchup against the Pistons. Um, you mentioned John Morant, and I think it's really interesting because on one hand, the matchup sucks. The Lakers are slow. They're a really good defensive team. On the other hand, Morant played 35 minutes against Golden State in his last game. He wasn't very good, but if he suddenly isn't on a minutes limit and and we can get 35 minutes from a guy with a 31% usage rate, uh, that becomes pretty appealing regardless of matchup. So that's something that I think we should at least pay attention to, uh, you know, kind of keep an eye on beat writers throughout the day, see if we can get some sort of quote about what happened and why he played 35 minutes out of nowhere. Yeah, that one was kind of interesting because I know they're looking to monitor things with him. They don't want to burn him out. Because, uh, you know, it's going to be a couple years before they have enough help to be worthwhile there. Uh, I was just looking at some of the pace numbers here. It looks like the Lakers ticking up just slightly. Uh, what most teams are about a dozen games in, 14 games in. So, uh, you know, a few few changes here and there can can move them in the positioning uh, up and down because frankly from the fastest pace team at which uh, currently is Milwaukee at 109 possessions per 48 to the slowest which is Orlando just just a teensy tick shy of 100 that's just nine possessions different so these there is some movement here um and it things are a little bit closer so it's kind of the top five bottom five are really the outliers and then everybody sort of comes out in the wash but the lakers still have that phenomenal defensive efficiency uh leading the league there, allowing just 97.7 points per 100 possessions uh on that one any sort of inter uh, injury news or anything like that that we should be looking at here for the point guard position for those that are building some placeholder lineups? I mean, you mentioned Murray. Obviously, look for confirmation that he's out. Um, I, I assume that you're right and that he won't play, but um, haven't actually seen that confirmed. If if he's out, then you know, obviously keeping an eye on Derek White, but um, Patty Mills is already priced up, so it, there, there's a good chance it kind of just ends up being useless. Um, Rajon Rondo, again, like if he's in, then cool you can consider rostering him if he's out it doesn't really do anything for dfs it doesn't make anyone that much better um so not the whole lot of, of injury news i guess all right and then just coming on down here the only other guys uh, george hill continues to sort of disappoint but he always does have some potential upside there. Uh, this feels like a game where Milwaukee ought to have it in hand. We saw them, of course, that game was in Atlanta, but the Atlanta played them a little bit closer. They've got uh, the matchup here. They are hosting Detroit. We don't have a line yet on that one, but uh, there's some other spots here. You're going to get Adam and I at 930 on Saturday morning. We will be breaking down everything game by game. We will have the 10 teams that are on back-to-backs. We'll have updates uh, if anything happened to any of their players we see anything uh, interesting regarding that we'll have our initial injury report run and we'll start to get the ownership so that is definitely going to be a show where we'll have more of a leisurely look at things and then of course that will be on our podcast feed available on darn near any podcast service you like we send that out to the old soundcloud and it populates all of the other sites let's move on to shooting guard adam so on a back-to-back -back, donovan mitchell here but i do like the matchup for him going against new orleans uh jimmy butler gets the uh double back-to-back -back against former teams in chicago tonight on friday uh will be in philadelphia on saturday and then uh 
The other guy that's kind of interesting to me is having himself at least a good first half. De Devontae Graham uh, has really uh, seen his shot attempts go up by about four and a half per game from the first 10 or so games when he was uh, not in the starting lineup to now when he's in the starting lineup, he's getting about 17, 17 and a half field goal attempts per game. So that's been pretty nice. What do you like here uh, near the top of our pricing list? Looks like nobody's really going to break the bank on us at this position. Yeah, it's a couple of guys that I think are over a little overpriced though. Um, CJ McCollum, obviously, his price tag coming up because of Lillard being out. Um, as soon as you know Lillard gets back, it makes him naturally overpriced. Jimmy Butler's salary on DraftKings has finally come up. Now he gets a really tough matchup against Philadelphia. Um, and then Drew Holiday. I don't really want to say he's overpriced, but he does have a tough matchup going at Utah. So the first guy that really stands out is Donovan Mitchell. You know, you mentioned that favorable matchup um, against a fast New Orleans team. So I think Mitchell's interesting. And then Devontae Graham, um, Alex and I talked about it a bit on the Deeper Dive show yesterday, but his production as a starter hasn't been as good as it was when he was coming off the bench. He's only averaged going into the game against the Wizards last night. Um, he's in the midst of going nuts in that game, but he had only been averaging 0.92 points per minute. His assist percentage was down. Um, his potential assists were down, but we didn't think that that was something that would continue because even when he was coming off the bench, he was still playing a lot of minutes alongside Rozier. They're still staggering the minutes between Rozier and Graham. So we both thought that it was something that would correct itself sooner rather than later and that you would get him back up over a fantasy point per minute like he has been for most of the season. Uh, definitely doing that against the Wizards as, as expected, but gets another pretty nice matchup here against the Bulls who are in the top 10 in pace now. Um, they're in the middle of the pack in defensive rating. And you know I think Graham is, is still a pretty solid option. All right, as we uh, kind of go down to the heart of the list here, there's some uh, quite a few options. Aaron Holiday has really seen his price uh, come up, particularly there on DraftKings. He's now up to 6,600. Coming off that 50 fantasy point game, he should continue to start uh, alongside Malcolm Brogdon, uh, even if Brogdon returns. Uh, let's see, Brogdon's still considered doubtful. Uh, for Saturday with that sore back, but uh, we've seen a lot of Holiday starting. That was his first really good game. Incredibly difficult matchup, I think, going against uh, Orlando. They tend to have uh, some really good team defense in their pace of play. Uh, I just want to check on that. Has not been great. Um, what do you like on the mid-tier here? Oh, yeah, Orlando is the slowest team. On the I don't plan on going back to Holiday, especially on DraftKings. His price tag's up to 6,600. Like if I'm rostering one of those, if I'm rostering someone at that price point, I would rather just go to Zach Levine. Um, same price tag against Charlotte, which is is pretty appealing. Um, overall, though, it's kind of a, a dead price point. I think um, not a lot of good matchups, not a lot of guys that you're going to feel really good about playing. Uh, Luke Kennard at 6,200 should get a bunch of minutes um, against the fast Milwaukee team, but it's also a good defensive team. Um, if if Blake Griffin is out on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, I think Kennard becomes an, a better play. But if Griffin's in, then it's just kind of a, a mediocre option, I think. All right. Uh, I do want to call out Aaron Holiday on FanDuel, where he is 4,000. That seems still somewhat appealing, even with the difficult <laughs> yeah. matchup. Yeah, he. I think he was 4,100 last time, so they dropped his <laughs> salary. Uh, he, he was like 60% on last time, I think. So. Oh, all right. Well, do you know that it is a tough matchup, but 4K for a starting point guard who's above average talent-wise. He doesn't have the experience yet, but he's, he does have some talent. Uh, Jeremy Lamb may return. He has not played for seven or eight games now. Last game he played was November 5th. So uh, they said he, even though he thinks he's going to be a go, of course, he's a game time decision. Uh, we may not have, let me see here, Josh Richardson dealing with the hip injury. He's been out for two games, could make it three, going against uh, his former squad there in Miami. You got Derek Rose, who is uh, playing his 25 minutes per game at about a fantasy point per minute. Not very exciting there. Brent Forbes, meh. Ooh, how about Norman Powell? He has uh, been getting the minutes, Adam, but he what? what is he, about a point six five fantasy points per minute guy? I think he's around point eight. Okay, so it is a little higher. So has he just been in a little bit of a slump? Is he somebody that you would consider on Saturday night? I just don't really like the price point. Uh, 5200 like it's not super expensive, but he's just not really that kind of guy. Um, yeah. I, I would rather take a shot. Like if you're talking tournaments and, and trying to get you know a really high ceiling, I would rather take a shot on somebody like Kobe White who um, has – 
I don't I don't even know if a lower floor is the right way to phrase it because Powell's floor is pretty low too. But um, his minutes are, are a lot more volatile. But he's the one that's more likely to go out there and just go nuts and and win you a tournament. All right, last guy I'm going to ask you about, and then we'll head on to small forward. Tomas Sadoransky, 4,900 on uh, DraftKings here. His minutes have been pretty much in the mid-20s. We know he's solid. This is a back-to-back. You know, they're, The Bulls are not really playing anybody outside of uh, Markkanen um, uh, and Levine more than 30 minutes per game. Are we at a price point yet? in a pace-up matchup against Charlotte, who is also on a back-to-back that you would consider Sadoransky? It's just really tough because of the minutes. Like, they're not playing him alongside Chris Dunn at all. The Chicago rotation just really sucks for DFS, Um, not in that it's really unpredictable, uh, more so in that you just have direct backups that limit the starter's minutes like Jim Boylan just hasn't been creative at all in his rotations and so instead of you know being like oh we can get Sadoransky more minutes by playing him alongside Dunn or we can get Markin in more minutes by playing him alongside uh you know playing him more at center we just really haven't seen much of that and it, it kind of caps these guys offside for, for DFS all right let's talk small forward here we've got some uh, fun conversations ahead LeBron of course still small forward on um uh, FanDuel uh, and dual eligibility of point guard small forward there on DraftKings. As we mentioned at the top, he is point guard only on Yahoo. But let's talk about Giannis Antetokounmpo. Amazing, amazing performance, Adam. 9 and 27, he played 36 minutes. He had 24 points, 19 boards, 15 assists. He at some point could flirt with a 20-20-20 triple-double. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. He's averaging like 1.92 points per minute this year, and that production goes up. Uh, you know, when you take Middleton off the floor, his all of his rates go up. So another good spot here against a, a weak Detroit defense. Um, no real reason not to be going back to Giannis. I want to see what... 2.25, basically, was his uh, DK production. You know, he gets the bonus for the double-double and the triple-double, uh, but blocks and steals are not are worth... Uh, Two, not three, but dang, that's pretty impressive. Uh, he is at an apex price. I don't remember seeing anybody as expensive as him on FanDuel. He is at 12958 on uh, Yahoo and then uh, 12000 even on DraftKings. We should be able to get there if we want to. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how things shake out there. Um, Let's see. New Orleans is going against Utah, so that's not really exciting for Brandon Ingram. Jabari Parker on the back-to-back going against Toronto. Still, even though they're missing some of their guys, Toronto's adequate on defense. I'm not seeing any exciting names here, Adam. Perhaps uh, an Evan Fournier, uh, OG Anobi, anybody else in the mid-tier here. Dylan Brooks, tough matchup against the Lakers. What do you got for us? I think that uh, Boyan Magdanovich is interesting in that pace up spot against New Orleans. He's playing 32 to 34 minutes. He's a really good shooter. Um, his usage has been up a bit this season. I'm looking now to see where it's at. I know earlier in the season it was it was really high. Um, even now through 13 games, he's at 25.7%, highest usage rate on the team except for Donovan Mitchell. So I think that he stands out um, in, in that price range. Jonathan Isaac, is does he not have small forward eligibility? He is uh, oh, yeah, there he is. small he's forward, seven, power five. forward on DK. Yeah. Um, if, if there's a site where he's cheap, then I think he's a, an interesting option. No Yahoo, Yahoo, he's 26. Yeah. Um, so he should get some center minutes with no Vooch and with no Aaron Gordon. Uh, that's something that Steve Clifford said he was going to do. So um, Isaac should just be more productive. But the DraftKings price tag in this matchup, I think, kind of accounts for that. All right, I'd forgotten Gordon was out. I knew Vooch was out. It says Gordon went, underwent an MRI, was missing at least one, maybe a couple games with his ankle injury. And then uh, Vooch, they aren't even going to look at him for another week and a half. Yikes. Uh, they both went down in the first, in- uh, first inning. Good God. First to a quarter with uh, ankle sprains. Not a good night there if you're a Magic fan. Um Anybody that we're missing, or shall we hit power for? Oh, Jay Crowder, fifty five hundred. Yeah, I don't hate it. I kind of do, just because of the matchup. Like, I think I would rather play OG at fifty three hundred against Atlanta. Let's see if there's anybody else. Kuzma, 
Talk to me about Kuzma. That'll be our pivot spot over to the power forward. Uh, only played nine minutes. Uh, let's see what happened. Got uh, scratched in the eye. Yikes. That's no yeah, fun. It's a good matchup. You know, Memphis does play fast. They don't play much defense. But the issue with Kuzma right now is that we haven't seen him playing the three. Uh, that's something that they had said they may do when he was coming back from his injury, but we haven't really seen that yet. And so as long as all of his minutes are coming at the four, it, it's tough for him to get a full, you know, to get enough run to be a really good DFS play because, you know, even if McGee's getting, let's say, 12 minutes, Howard gets his 20 to 22, Davis plays the rest at, at center, Davis is still getting his 36, 37 minutes. So that really only leaves, you know, 26 to 28 minutes a night for Kuzma if he's only going to play the four. Um, so that, you know, kind of kind of takes away some appeal from him. All right. Back to the top of the pricing list. We have Anthony Davis on a back-to-back. We'll know more on Saturday, but that's always uh, an adventure in and of itself. Pascal uh, Siakam going against Atlanta. Good matchup for him. However, uh, I don't know. He's disappointed a little bit. Now, now Toronto, uh, even though they're shorthanded, they've continued to win at a decent clip. Of course, they are the defending champions, so they're taking no game lightly here. So I do like uh, Siakam, and he is going to play close to 40 minutes. So he's interesting. How about Kevin Love against Portland in a potential audition for a trade later this season? It's an interesting narrative, I guess. Um, I, I, I'm trying here. It's it's Friday night. What I'm sitting at home <laughs> drinking a nice iced water. This is not – my wife's in the other room with my mom watching Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so, I mean, assuming, assuming Davis goes, I think he's still underpriced in a really good matchup against Memphis. I love the spot for Siakam against Atlanta. Um, assuming Atlanta can hang in that game, you should get 40 minutes from Siakam, which is, is nice. Um, Ibaka not expected to play um, if he – gets upgraded obviously that changes the outlook for Ibaka a little bit um but Kevin Love it, it's an okay spot um Portland not great defensively not terrible but uh Carmelo Anthony you know not someone that you're gonna be too concerned with I I think that I'd probably rather go to like a Julius Randall or a LaMarcus Aldridge for a little bit less but I uh, love certainly in the conversation so do you know when the last time the Spurs lost seven games in a row was? And I know this because I was watching the... Uh, 96? Yeah, 97. Yeah. It's been 20 years. But, uh, yeah, they lost seven in a row. They, they have, they're they playing faster. The defense is not there. Uh, Aldridge hasn't looked great. DeRozan ended up playing 40 minutes. The Wizards somehow hung on thanks to Ish Smith who became unconscious and was draining three-pointers. I don't even think his eyes were open when he was taking the shots at him, but uh, such is life when you're a Wizards fan. Julius Randle is the question. Now, you mentioned his name. 68 on DraftKings. That feels okay. 8,000 on FanDuel and 30 on Yahoo. Are you ready to spin the wheel or watch David Fisdale spin the wheel and see if it's going to be Morris, Portis, Robinson, Randle, any inkling of who's going to get the minute? It's, I think, basically just the hot hand situation. Um, as long as the the key that you're looking for when you can start to be comfortable again is when Taj Gibson gets out of the starting lineup. Um, when they go, you know, we'll, at some point we'll probably get you know an alert like you know Bobby Portis starting or, or Robinson starting. When that happens, I think that it probably means Gibson's not in the rotation and that we can go back to giving the center minutes to Robinson and Portis and giving the power forward minutes to Randall and Knox. But as long as Gibson's starting, it, it makes it more of a hot hand situation because even if you're giving him 14 to 16 minutes, that is 14 to 16 minutes that Bobby Portis is playing at the four and potentially keeping Randall off the floor if Portis is playing well or Randall's playing poorly. You know, the flip side is that you can still go to these guys in tournaments because when Randall plays well, he's going to get more minutes. Uh, if you look at their most recent game against the Sixers, you, you got 36 minutes from Randall. You got 14 from Gibson. You got uh, 24 from Portis and Robinson. Looks like he was in ma yeah Robinson was in massive foul trouble, so he played 13 minutes. But you know what happens if if Robinson's not in foul trouble and and he gets 24 minutes? Do those minutes come from Portis? Do they come from Randall? Um, so it's I think just kind of a messy situation for as long as Gibson's in the rotation. All right, and then I'm looking here for uh, some scrubby options. Larry Nance, but he played what two games and everything's predicated on 
Thompson or Love resting for him to have some relevancy. Horford is on the back-to-back. -back. Not an easy one there against Miami. You already hit on Boyan. Uh, I don't really want any part of Thaddeus Young on a back-to-back, -back, but he is 4000 on DraftKings in the minimum price 10 on Yahoo, and he's going to be going against a Charlotte team that is not really interested in playing defense. Those are some of the names we're looking at. Moving on to the center position, Adam, what do you like from the top? Joel Embiid said he's playing both both games of the back-to-back. -back. I think it'll be interesting to see how many minutes he ends up playing on Friday night. Hopefully that can give us an idea of what to expect on Saturday. But um, he's still pretty inexpensive at 9,200 on DraftKings. It's not a good matchup against Miami, but obviously he's a really good player. He's averaged 1.6 DraftKings points per minute this season. So um, if we can reasonably expect 32 minutes, that's pretty appealing. Um, Andre Drummond's price tag at 8,300 going up against Milwaukee assuming it's a close game, you should get, you know, 35, 36 minutes from him. Obviously that's a big assumption when you talk about Detroit on a back to back and how good Milwaukee is, but the upside at 8,300 is, is really, really high for Drummond. And then it's a good spot for Gobert as well against the Pelicans. I'm um, a little more expensive than I would like, but he works as a tournament pivot to Drummond. All right. As, uh, I'm just looking, we've got a couple games that are finishing up the third quarter right now. On Friday night, as we are recording this, it is Charlotte 96, the Wizards 90 at the end of the third quarter. They got another frame to play, and they've got 186 combined points. Uh, not to be outdone, but they have been by Atlanta and Detroit. They got a minute left to go in the third. It's Atlanta 82, Detroit 106. Yes, yeah. Detroit has scored 106 points, <laughs> and there's still a minute to go in the third quarter. Yeah, it would oh, be really nice if Atlanta can close that gap. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Detroit's played just nine people. Uh, Thon McCurr has eight minutes. They've been riding the starters pretty well in that one, so we'll have to see what they're going to do with the 24-point lead heading into the final frame. Uh, back, I got my filter set up here again. Uh, looking towards the middle of the pack. What the hell is going on with Cody Zeller and his minutes? He was someone I wanted to recommend against the Wizards, but I just couldn't get there because I said, I don't know what they're going to do with his minutes. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. It's the kind of guy where you can play him at low ownership, and when he's popular, I lean towards you know getting away. It, it's not even like it's really been matchup based. It's in in part he lost minutes um two games the game before the Wizards game. He picked up his third and fourth foul pretty early in the third quarter and then just never came back. The game before that, uh he, you know, lost maybe some blowout run, but we've also seen games where he just doesn't close. And so it's it's really been a guessing game. You know, we had James Borrego a couple of weeks ago say that he was happy playing Zeller 26, 28 minutes a night to keep him fresh, but now we're seeing games where he doesn't even play that. Uh, going up against Chicago, you know, it's a decent matchup if he gets the minutes, but that's a huge, huge if, obviously. All right, let me reset the filters here. The audience has said that they are interested in hearing what you have to say when we look at the other uh, sites here. So let's look at some true value plays on FanDuel first. We did mention Aaron Holiday at 4000 even in the tough matchup, feels like a bit of a misprice. DeAndre Bembry is 43 on uh, DraftKings. He is 46 on uh, FanDuel and 10 on Yahoo. And he's got, he's got uh, just shy of 40 fantasy points here with the fourth quarter to go. Can he catch lightning in a bottle again if Cam Reddish is out? Yeah, I think you can go right back to him. Um, you obviously, keep the expectations in check. There was no, there, there's no reason to think he was going for 40 on Friday. There's no reason to think he's going for 40 on Saturday. But if you're going to get 30 to 32 minutes of someone averaging around 0.8 points per minute, that's still perfectly fine at that price tag. Um, obviously, we mentioned Aaron Holiday, just incredibly cheap on FanDuel. So uh, go right back to that. Um, and Kem Birch is expected to get the start over Mo Bamba, so I think that's a, a reasonable value as well. Oh, that makes sense with all those vacated front court minutes. I wondered why he was kind of popping on some of those things. How many minutes would you think Birch gets? Like twenty? Oh, wow. He's <laughs> he's fifty seven on Fanduel. Oh, that's why he's not. Yeah, I saw him on DK when I was sorting. Yeah, on DK he's forty three. Fanduel he's fifty seven. Yahoo he's ten. So Yahoo at ten. 25 minutes yeah so i would guess mid-20s maybe a little bit more if he's playing well um but yeah it definitely i would definitely think enough where ten dollars he's an easy play 
at 5,700 with one center position, I'm probably not going to be interested. And then DraftKings, it's you know a perfectly fine price at 4,300 with multiple center spots. All right. Um, let me go over here to Yahoo. Let's look at the top. Uh, let's see. We have so we have Giannis at 58, Davis at 51, LeBron at 51, Young at 46, Siakam at uh, 45. I would, I think I'm gonna have to say Siakam at 45, even with that $13 discount to Giannis is like a whole nother player. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it obviously depends on you know who else you can get yeah, in. I, your- I wouldn't be dancing and laughing if people went the other way, uh, but uh, you know, Giannis projects out for about what sixty or so, and let's see, Siakam will probably be forty-five to, depending on your side of choice. It's all going to come down to the blocks and steals for him, uh, but he could be closer to fifty. It'll be interesting. I don't. I obviously Giannis has the, has the upside, but yeah. I, I think I would lean Giannis. I normally end up projecting him closer to seventy than sixty. Okay. Uh, how you feel if uh, if Lillard's back uh, is and he's a full go? Uh, this Portland needs to get some wins, or they're going to be out of relevance real quick. How do you feel about him going against Cleveland? I think he's fine. Um, I don't know that he's a a top play for me. Um, like I think I would. Yeah, I was going to say I would rather have Trey Young, but I guess that's a tough spot for Young. Um, yeah, pretty pretty comparable. I think I'd rather have Donovan Mitchell at thirty four dollars than Lillard at forty two. All right, uh, two guys. Here's some uh, or uh, Orlando value. Uh, Markel Fultz is minimum on Yahoo five on Fanduel, and then Terrence Ross minimum on Yahoo fifty two on Fanduel. How do you feel about those guys with the full trickle down effect of minutes uh, missing two of the five starters? Not sure if it'll affect Fultz because too much because we haven't seen them playing him alongside DJ Augustine all that much. Um, that's definitely something to keep an eye on and see if it happens. I think that it does open the door for Ross to maybe get closer to 30 minutes than 25 or 26. He's had trouble getting good looks this year. The offense just really hasn't done a good job of, of getting him the shots that he needs, but that should change sooner rather than later. He's obviously a guy that can score a lot in a hurry, so the matchup isn't perfect, but I do think Terrence Ross should benefit without Gordon and, and Vooch. All right, with that, gamers, we're going to wrap this up. Reminder, you can catch Adam and I at 9.30 on the Osmo YouTube channel. If you guys have not yet signed up for Osmo, you definitely want to do that. We have a variety of ways you can get in there. The easiest way is to do a one-month package. Use the promo code EARLYBIRD, all one word. You get full access to everything at 50% off for that first month. If you want to go to Osmo.com, look up in the upper left and see where it says the Osmo Plus. Click on that and you can check out our different uh, packages. It'll ask you to fill out a little questionnaire about the volume you play, how many days a week you play. But we have uh, offerings from as low as uh, $5 a week all the way on up to that uh, uh, full premium platinum package. You can follow Adam over there on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. I'm at EmacDFS and it is Osmo underscore C-O-M. With that, gamers, good luck.